Good morning. Pop quiz. What color combination could create this glowing background with its crackly, clay-like, grungy, finished, textured goodness? <laughs> Today, I'm going to be sharing some new to me colors, the Mayan series of Daniel Smith watercolor. So we'll be talking about Mayan watercolors that Daniel Smith was kind enough to send to me. So we have, so excited, I, I know nothing about these colors. So we're gonna learn in real time together, Mayan orange, Mayan red, Mayan violet, Mayan blue genuine and Mayan dark blue. What's interesting is that this is very similar to my core palette as far as the types of colors. Like this could be a set of colors in its own right. And I've learned a few things about each. Mayan yellow is not granulating and it is transparent. Mayan orange, non-granulating, semi-transparent. Mayan red is granulating and is transparent. Mayan violet is granulating and transparent. Your Mayan blue genuine, which is a Primatech color, is granulating and transparent. And Mayan dark blue is non-granulating, semi-transparent. So we're going to see how these colors mix and mingle in a pour. A note, these are considered level two on your light fastness, which means that they're considered very good light fastness with a rating of up to 100 years. We're gonna learn a few things today. We're gonna do a pour, play with some new colors, see how they mix. They're granulating, I mean, there's just so much to learn. <laughs> yellow, Mayan yellow. Then I'll put the Mayan orange. And the Mayan red on a cup. I'll take Mayan violet. I think I'll put the Mayan violet over here. Uh, one of my favorite color mixes is adding some violet or magenta to a yellow, and that makes for a neat sand color. I'm gonna put some Mayan Blue Genuine here. Okay. This will be the Mayan Dark Blue. These lids are so tricky sometimes. Have my water, this, and I think what I'm gonna do to start is just swatch those colors out. Just see what they look like. First off and first most. First off and first most? <laughs> how, <laughs> how they look straight away. So I'll do kind of a stronger, quite, quite the cadmium yellow, isn't it? And then I'll water it down a little bit. That is the Mayan yellow. This is the Mayan orange. These kind of have that, um, they kind of have a cadmium vibe to them for sure. I'll get a little tissue. Cadmium red. It mixes, it looks a lot like quinacridone red. Let's see. It's kind of got the vibe of like an alizarin, alizarin, <laughs> alizarin crimson, or a quinacridone red maybe. It's pretty. These are pretty colors, they're bold. I wonder how their dry shift is. So something to, to look at too is how much they fade as they dry. These are all things. It doesn't mean a color is less than or more than. It just means that to use that color, ooh, you should know these things and then that way you can paint with them accordingly. So if it has more of a dry shift, you would mix 
more paint, less water to have a stronger pigment load. Then this is the Mayan Blue Genuine. Which is a very pretty, um, kind of reminds me of Payne's Gray Blue. There's a Payne's Gray, which is more of a black, and then there's Payne's Gray Blue, which is kind of like that color right there. And then we have Mayan Dark Blue. is more of a little bit of a green so um, now that I've swatched them out I can see they're not much like my primary colors my primary colors are a little bit more uh, it has a turquoise it has more of a turquoise and more of a, a traditional blue than this uh, so but for nature hello <laughs> So now that we have our colors swatched, I can think about what I want to do for pouring. Already I can see that that yellow is far too bright for the vision that I have for the colors I want to use. So remember I said earlier I can mix it with some of the Mayan Violet. So I'm going to add some water. And we're going to need quite a bit of water for this because it's quite a big sheet of paper. <clears throat> so I'm going to pull a little bit of this Mayan Violet and then quite a bit of this Mayan Yellow. And I want to mix this until I have, I may have put too much of the Mayan uh, violet. So you mix it until it kind of looks like an orangey yellow. And then when it swatches, it should look like a sand color. Watch. See that? Isn't that pretty? I could put a little bit more yellow if I want it to have just a little bit more of a glow just to say a little bit more on the wheat grass color very pretty color oh you know that's very pretty but remember we were talking about the dry shift and just making sure it pops next to those colors which will also be probably toned down I want to make sure you mix up your colors really, really good. Okay, now let's look at it. Oh my goodness, look how pretty that is. There we go, now we have a glow. Now, since this is the magenta, no, <laughs> the violet and the yellow, the violet is granulating. So the fa the, this is going to be exciting, super exciting. So let's just get this part done with. I like to take my dirty water so that I know where my water is so I can see it. Today I'm using Fabriano Artistico Soft Press. This is my last sheet of this paper and it's very old. I've had it a long time. So I'm trying to go through some of my older papers before the sizing is busted. You should typically use your paper within two years, especially because we don't know how long the paper has been sitting at the plant or the shipping yard before it comes to us. So for this pour, I'm having everything uniformly moist and glistening, no puddles. And I'll go straight to the pour. Move it around. I can activate it with some water. Good to move a little bit more. And I could have a cup to pour any off. I 
I'm already noticing how thick it is. I mean, it is really on here. <laughs> really, really on here. So I'm gonna keep it kind of composed to over here. Go ahead and pour it off. Wow, what a beautiful color it is. I like to go in diagonals. It tends to be more organic. Kind of like how thick it is, because I feel like there's a good chance that it's going to stay this bright and bold and beautiful. I'm just gonna send it up just a little bit. There we go. Look at how bright it is. Now, I might be overshooting my mark, for instance, uh, if this doesn't have much of a dry shift. <laughs> This could be some really thick paint. When it comes to watercolor pouring with my normal palette, if it's too bright, it's just right. So this bold, beautiful color in my face, I'm hoping uh, will be just right. Look at that. Okay, so I'm gonna put this at an angle in order to encourage it to have a place to run off, off the page. And uh, I can see it's really, really thick. Let me encourage it just a little bit more. And if it's like puddling up on it, it's just going to take forever and ever to dry. So we don't want that. Go ahead and let it continue to come down that way. But I'm really happy with that. I think it's really pretty, pretty bold color. I won't lie. <laughs> I'm shocked. <laughs> when uh, the colors that I use, they tend to just run right off the paper. They're not thick like this. So maybe I just mixed it so thick, but it's already lightning. So listen to me second guessing my choices. <laughs> I think that that is good. It's gonna keep it right there. Okay, I'm gonna let it be and let it dry. Could I splatter some other colors in here? I could, I could, but I want my, I, I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm just gonna let it be. I have one little blob of magenta there. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna let it be. Here's how those colors are drying. And it's leaving so much sediment. Look at that. So pretty. Let's look at the crud. Look at that crud line. Sometimes those turn out so cool. I'm letting it be. I'm <sighs> I have to I have to practice what I preach. Let it be and let it dry. Stick back to this guy. We've got some proper crud. <laughs> Basically crud, meaning like this stuff, where the, the uh, paint didn't have anywhere to go, so it's just kind of stuck. Oh, cool. Let that dry. It's a pretty awesome little swatch, so I'm going to go ahead and write my notes. So this is Mayan Yellow Plus. Be continue to show some of this amazing <laughs> texture where that color really did build up and even almost like crack almost like clay I'm in love with this color I think it is so so my video cut off but I had to share this anyways because this is probably one of my favorite pours I've ever done it has not only the color but also the grit of nature. If my video had continued, you would have seen me go on to destroy this as a painting. <laughs> but I wanted to have this record of this color mix and how I was able to pour this crackled clay finish. As a matter of fact, I wish I would have just let this be and framed it because I would have hung it on my wall. Absolutely beautiful. Happy pouring, everybody.